Good morning. We confess our sins to the Lord not because we are trying to earn our salvation, but because we are acknowledging that in Christ there is the forgiveness of sins, and that is what God gives us. We'll hear more about it in our service. We are still in the Easter season. As a result, our bell choir is going to offer in the spirit of Easter and of the resurrection of our Lord a medley of Easter hymns. May God bless our time of worship together.
Please stand. And we continue on page 154 with service setting one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed are they whose sin the Lord does not count against them. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done, and we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us, according to your promises in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all your sins. He sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer and Savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world from the despair of death. By his resurrection to life, 
Grant your faithful people gladness of heart and the hope of eternal joys. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Our first reading for the third Sunday of Easter is in the book of Acts, chapter 3, beginning at verse 11. Peter and John heal a man who was crippled. And they explain, it was not by their power, but by the grace of God in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We read, While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his, his servant, Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life. But God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah, who has been appointed to you, even Jesus. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 150b. The copy of the psalm is in the insert in your bulletin.
Our second reading is from the first letter of John, chapter 1, beginning at verse 5, our sermon text for this morning. <clears throat> this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word is not in us. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin, but if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand in honor of the reading of the Holy Gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 24, beginning at verse 36. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, <clears throat> Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet, and while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. The Gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated for the singing of the hymn of the day, I Am Content, My Jesus Lives Again, hymn 464.
grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father, through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who makes us pure and clean in God's sight. Amen. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, the sanctuary renovations are happening. Isn't it exciting? You may have already noticed the new lighting in the narthex or the Bible verses etched above the exterior of each of the doors. The new upholstery for the pews and the flooring will arrive very soon. They'll be installed this summer. And the last piece that I'm trying to work on is to restore the doors off of 7th Street and Washington Street. You may have noticed that they're kind of starting to splinter a little. They've lost a lot of their natural color. And it's not just due to weathering in Minnesota with the wind and the snow and the rain that hits it. They've been bleached by the sun. This week I pulled out some lawn furniture, hoping that winter is officially behind us now. But some of that lawn furniture isn't quite the vibrant color that it was when I purchased it. It too has been bleached by the sun. For some people, when they go on a vacation and they spend some time outdoors, their hair comes back a couple of shades lighter, bleached by the sun. But did you know that radiation from the sun not only removes color, but can also remove bacteria? I used to read a prepper blog, and one of them suggested a way that you could purify water easily. All you need is a clear plastic bottle like this, some sun, and some time. Fill a bottle of water like this with normal rainwater, puddle water even, and if you let it sit in the sun directly for six hours or indirect sunlight for two days, it will kill all the bacteria. At least that's what this website said. All of the E. coli, all of the salmonella, all of the giardia will be gone. It will be pure enough for you to drink, even if it doesn't taste great. It will be safe. In our sermon for this morning, we hear how the sun, S-O-N, purifies us. Jesus takes away not just bacteria from our lives, but all of our sin. He makes us pure and holy, morally pure in God's sight. And so in a sense, you could say that you and I have been bleached by the sun. Our text for consideration is that epistle lesson that's found in 1 John portions of chapter 1 and chapter 2. Of course, you know that without the sun, it wouldn't take long and we would all be dead. Without the heat of the sun, we would all freeze to death. Without the light of the sun, there would be no crops, nothing to eat. We would starve. Simply put, the sun gives life. But ironically, you also know that too much sun can be harmful. Not just melanoma, but you can get sunburns. And if you got too close to the sun, it would be too hot to handle. You ever had a bad sunburn? That would be absolutely nothing compared to if you flew your rocket ship too close to the sun. You would be burned up, totally consumed by its heat. In a way, that's the way the Apostle John describes God, whom he says is light. Like the sun, we could not live without him. He sustains all life, even giving us that sun that shines and grows our crops and heats our planet. But like the sun, we can't get too close to him. Not the way that we are in our sin. Or we would be burned up, totally consumed. God is light. And that light is so intense that it burns through the darkness. Of course, John is speaking metaphorically here, and that darkness he's talking about is sin. Live a lifestyle apart from God. Live a lifestyle of deliberate and intentional sin, rejecting Jesus as your Savior outside of the light, living in the darkness, we would all freeze to death. But then John points out that if we live a moral life and we pretend that we're good and good enough for God, well, we're just lying. We would still be consumed by the sun, by God in his glory and in his wrath because we haven't been perfect claim that we've never lived in the darkness, that we've not rebelled against God by our actions, that we don't really need him, well, that's a bold-faced lie, says John. And no one is fooled by it. Your roommate's not fooled by that claim. Your spouse isn't fooled by it. Your pastors certainly aren't fooled by it. And God definitely 
is not fooled if you claim to be without sin. John says, if we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. And I think what's interesting to note about that verse is that John says we. He includes himself in the possibility that he might slip into this terrible line of thought. The truth is, you are a sinner. You have rebelled against God. You have done things that were in direct defiance of what God wants for you in your life. And it doesn't matter if it was accidental or deliberate. You have said things that you would rather God not have heard. And it doesn't matter if it was thought out or just blurted in a moment of frustration. You have thought things that you would be embarrassed to see projected on these screens, and yet God sees your every thought. The truth is you're a sinner, a rebel. On your own, you are not pretty good. That's what God says about you. And that's what God says about me. And if you want to argue that point, well, if we claim to be without sin, we make him out to be a liar. And his word has no place in our lives. You are a sinner, and as such, you need help. So own up to it. Don't try to pretend that you're good enough without God. Perhaps he will leave you to your own devices, and you will be without God. Remember your total dependence on him every day the same way you depend on the sun. Keep life on this earth. Remember your total dependence upon his grace every moment in your lives and confess your sin to him. For without him, the only thing that we have is darkness where we will freeze to death. Without him, we will get the worst sunburn, an S-O-N burn, when Christ comes again to judge the whole world. We need help. And only God has the solution. So thank God that he gives us the solution. The boat was ruined. The man watched it sink beneath the surface of the water before his very eyes. Thankfully, he could swim. And he swam away, and he spotted land, and he swam to that land. He walked all the way around the beach and discovered he was on an island. Surrounded by nothing but salt water, he knew that if he drank that salt water, it would dehydrate him even faster, and surely he would die. But he walked to the center of the island, and there he found a small pond full of water. But now he had a new dilemma. What do I do? Do I drink the water because it could be full of all kinds of bacteria, and then my body would reject it and do all it could to get rid of any bacteria in my system, dehydrating me even quicker? Thankfully, he found a clear water bottle that had washed on shore. And he scooped up that pond water in it, and he let it sit in the sun for hours and hours. And even though it still looked filthy and disgusting, he knew it was safe to drink. He would live. In a similar way to how sun can purify water, the Son of God purifies us. Not of bacteria, but of sin. He bleaches away that sin so that we are pure and holy. And now we will live until our final rescue comes. Easter is the proof of that. Easter is the proof of God's purification of sin that it did work. That everything that Jesus did on Good Friday, he accomplished. Our pollutants, our sinful thoughts, our sinful words, our sinful actions are all gone because of Jesus and his work for us. That's what John's getting at in his message here. Have you ever had this thought, am I really a Christian? After all, I, I keep falling into this same sin again and again. I don't want to sin, but I keep doing it, so how can I really call myself a Christian if I'm not walking in the light as God is in the light? If you've had that thought, you're not alone. John wanted to assure his readers that they were indeed forgiven. That they were pure and holy in God's sight, not because of their works or their actions, but because of God's work and action for them. In fact, where our text says, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, the Greek literally says, this is the promise we have heard from him and declare to you. 
And you know the promise that Jesus is the righteous one. He lived a perfect life in our place. And he died an innocent death on the cross and by the blood that was shed on the cross, we are purified from sin. His blood purifies us because his death paid for it all. And if you ever wonder, does this really apply to me? John makes that absolutely clear. He says, he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Quick show of hands, anyone here born on the moon? No? How about Mars? Anyone born on Mars? If you were born on the world, this promise is for you. In fact, even if you were born on Mars or on the moon, the word is cosmos, this promise is for you. He paid for our sins, and not only for ours, but the sins of the whole world. That means it's for everyone. That means it's for you. And as if that weren't enough, John adds comfort upon comfort here. He gives what is probably my favorite verse in the whole Bible, and I am very thankful that we've added it to our new liturgy so that we all together recite it every other week, committing it to memory. He says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And you know what my favorite word is in this English translation? Will. He doesn't say God might forgive us our sins if we happen to catch him on a day where he's in a good mood. Or probably he will, or I hope he will, or I think he possibly might. No, if we confess our sins, he will forgive us every time. And that is a promise you can take to the bank. And it's a promise that takes away the fear of confession. To be honest, it can be scary to confess your sin to someone else. If you confess your sin to a roommate or a spouse or to a friend, what if they retort, you're right, you did something terrible. No, I don't forgive you. I hope you pay for this and I hope you pay big. But that will never, ever happen with God. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If you confess, literally, if you agree with God that you are a sinner, a rebel in need of his forgiveness and help, he will give it every time. And that promise removes any fear of confessing. When we know the result is full and free forgiveness every time, it frees us to fess up every time we mess up. God's promise of forgiveness is true and trustworthy, so confess to him and be forgiven. So here is my challenge to you. Go home this afternoon and take a personal inventory of your life. Is there some sin, some pet sin that you're perpetuating? Something you're trying to cover up and hide from a spouse or a friend? Some sin you know that needs confession? Admit it to God. Confess to him what you've been doing or thinking or saying be forgiven if we confess our sins he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness then just as a man can drink purified water and live so too purified of our sins you and I will live eternally so make this your daily habit whenever you mess up fess up and be forgiven Finally, as you rejoice in God's forgiveness, a forgiveness he gives right away every time, then show him how thankful you are. Don't go and intentionally muddy the water again that's been made pure, but do all you can to keep it pure. Yes, you will mess up again. John says, I write this so that you will not sin, but he knows that we will fail, and so he immediately adds, but if we do sin, go fess up again. Take it to Jesus, and he, our perfect advocate, our perfect defense attorney, will come to our side. If anyone does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. 
And he will argue your case before the Father for you. He will win the case for you. And the judge will have to declare not guilty, innocent, sinless, and holy for Jesus' sake. The light has made you clean, dear friends. You've been purified of all of your sins. You have been bleached by the sun. Now walk in the light as he is in the light, as you live for him in thanks. Delight in the light as you grow in your faith and rejoice in the forgiveness that he's brought. Live in the light as you express your gratitude every day to Jesus. Serve him in thanks for the truth that Easter means you are pure and holy in God's sight, bleached by the sun. In his name, dear friends, amen. I invite you to stand. May our Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way by his comforting promises that he will purify you from all of your sin. Amen. Having heard of God's grace given us in Christ, we join together to encourage each other by confessing the faith we share. We'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated as we continue our service with the prayer of the church. We turn to page 164 for the responsive prayer of the church. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son, through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working through the means of grace. Strengthen and defend your church, that by your word and sacraments faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those for whom death draws near. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you who now rest from their labors. Console those who are mourning or living with sadness. Grant us these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus who died and rose again. Amen. We now receive our offerings.
we sing hymn 713, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Please stand. We continue on page 171 with the prayers. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the closing hymn, Christ is Arisen, hymn 458. <laughs>
Good morning once again to everyone. A special welcome to those of you who are visiting with us. Please sign our guest book in the narthex so that we can remember your visit or else scan the QR code that is in the bulletin. The only announcement that I really have is that following this service at 9.30, we will have Bible class downstairs. Uh, Professor Schmoller is going to be conducting that Bible class. You may join us in person or online. There is a link that was sent out to everyone so that you are able to do that. Otherwise, oh. oh, we have, never mind, we have a Wells connection this morning. I wasn't even aware. Sorry about that. God bless your day.